just when you thought you did it all. This case is exactly what the thumbnail and the title suggests. Two men add a brawl, add a fight, to the death over a woman. It was totally ridiculous and it was totally unfair. But what makes this even worse is it was organised by the woman. And even worse than that, the person that she wanted to lose was the father of the youngest daughter. Before we get into this short but ridiculous case, let's do the disclaimers. This is a true crime case. It involves real people. These real people have families. So although I do want you to share it, and I do want you to comment, please do so with sensitivity. Aska Juskaskine was from Kaunas in Lithuania. In 2012, she married Jedrus Juskaskus. He was also from Kaunas, and he'd been in the UK since 2010. They got married and had a child. They only had one child together, but Asta did have four in total. In fact, Jedrus was Asta's third husband, and there's a few things you should know right from the get-go. In 2019, Asta was 35 years old, and Jedrus was 42. They'd both been living in London together, and Asta was a home-visiting care worker. Although Jedrus had been known to be the jealous type of person, he'd never been known to be a violent type of person. But Asta had developed this fascination with violent and dangerous men. And she was basically getting very bored and very frustrated with a married life. It had gotten to a point in the marriage where Asta was constantly shouting at Jedrus and at the kids. And she even went as far as to tell a friend that she would never allow it to get to a point where she would bury herself at Forte with washing and household chores. So after six years of marriage, in 2018, Asta and Jed Roos were getting a divorce. However, Jed Roos, who was still madly in love with Esther and never actually wanted the divorce to start with, still continued to provide financial support for his daughter, and he went round to the house regularly to see her. And a big factor in this case is that Asta was still maintaining an intimate physical relationship with him even after the divorce. I mean, at this point, you can already see where this is going, can't you? It turns out that Asta had already met a man online before they got divorced. He weren't a local man though. He were in Lithuania. In a prison in Lithuania. This guy is called Mantis Kavderis, and he's 25 years old. That makes him 10 years younger than her, and 17 years younger than her husband. And there's literally no way of me telling you what Mantis is in prison for without getting into trouble. So let's just say he's the worst kind of rapist. And a twist that makes this even stranger is Asta had actually been talking to another guy in the same prison, sentenced for the same crime, and she'd been to meet him in prison, and it was through him that she got in contact with Mantis. And yeah, that means not only had Asta been talking to these lads while she was still married, but she'd even been over to Lithuania to meet them in prison while she was still married. And this isn't people that she knew. These aren't people that she knew from earlier in life. She'd met both of these people online. So when Asta went online and filed for a divorce in 2018, she already had it in her mind that she was going to marry a new toy boy. I mean, what the... Ripping your family apart for the grass is greener on the other side crap is one thing. But geez, this guy's in prison for pretty much the worst thing you can be in prison for. And it gets even worse than that, because the guy that she's planning on bringing back to her family home had a reputation for violence in prison. He threatened to shoot a man in the leg for slandering Asta. And when we say slander, what he actually said was that she posts exotic selfies online. Mantis also told her he assaulted a lot of people also stabbed a few, and shot at some too. Anyway, now we know how much of a lovely guy this is, this charmer was supposed to be released from prison on the 16th of April 2019. And according to the Telegraph, two months before that, in February 2019, Asta went over to Lithuania and married him inside the prison. And obviously, Jed Roos knew nothing about this. He didn't know they were talking, he didn't know they were visiting, let alone this alleged marriage. Mantis did indeed get released in April 2019. And then on the 24th of April, Asta found out that he'd tried to come to the UK, 
but he'd been stopped and deported. So with Mantis being unable to enter the UK, Astor went to visit him in Stockholm. That was on the 29th of May 2019. And if this situation isn't already messy enough, Astor was still apparently sleeping with Jed Roos all the way up until this point and maybe even after. Now, I don't know how long Asta was in Stockholm for, but two weeks later, Mantis did manage to get into the UK, and Mantis and Asta met up in London on the 12th of June. From then on, he stayed in Asta's family home on Iron Mill Lane in Dartford, Kent. And through all of this, Asta had been telling a friend about everything. She knew all the ins and outs of Asta's very complicated and very dangerous love life. So prior to Mantis's arrival, Asta's friend warned her that she was making a very dangerous situation. And in response to being warned how very dangerous Mantis was, Asta said, I think I will play until I get into trouble. I probably like the risks. Dangers. While Mantis was at Asta's family home, Asta was having another phone conversation with his friend. And it were on loudspeaker. During this call, this friend saying, look, Asta, this is really dangerous. If Jed Roos comes round and he meets Mantis or the other guy that he was speaking to online, then there's going to be trouble. There's going to be violence. It's going to be a nasty scene. And as she finished saying this, in the background, Mantis shouted, F off. What can he do to me? In mid-June, Jed Roos went round to the family home. Now, I can't be quite sure if this was just after or just before Mantis had arrived. But he did threaten that he'd call the social services. And at this point, there's a bit of primitive, competitive male behaviour going on. But it wouldn't have been all that bad if Asta hadn't been behind the scenes pulling their strings. There were some back and forth between Jed Roos and Mantis. But when Jed Roos said that he would visit the family home whenever he wants, and there is nothing Mantis can do about it, Mantis said he can come round and visit his daughter whenever he wants. He didn't really have a problem with that. Now to me, that seems great everything is going really smoothly. And in my opinion, if it weren't going smoothly, it would be Asta's job as the person in the middle to set out the rules, set out the boundaries and say, look, this is my house, these are my children, this is my love life. And just make it clear to everyone what their role is. Keeping in mind, Jed Roos does have a good reason to visit. But Asta took the complete opposite approach. She was angry. That wasn't the reaction that she wanted from a bad boy. So she started putting pressure on Mantis and saying, look, you should have been arguing back. You should have kicked him out of the house. Knowing that both men thought they were in love with her, Asta decided there was a solution. She suggested that Mantis and Jed Roos meet somewhere in Romford and sort it out. She actively wanted these two men to fight it out and whoever won got to be with her. They were initially going to meet at Shenstone Park and have this duel, this fight. But then one of them pointed out that actually that's way too close to where we all live, and it'll be far too obvious we need to be further afield. They also talked about a graveyard, but again, it needed to be further away. Asta then suggested that they met and had this duel in the streets of Romford, somewhere shady, where a lot of deals were taking place late at night. That way, if something happened, it wouldn't be a big deal the police would just think it was down to them shady types of deals. And by the way, while Asta's planning this, she's actually sat on the sofa at home with her kids. And like I said, she's telling her friend everything. So she's telling her friend about these plans. And her friend's like, if something happens. And by that context, it was clear to her that Asta fully intended for someone to be seriously hurt or worse. Asta made it completely clear that she really wanted this fight to go ahead. She wanted these two men to fight over her and she'd quite happily go with whoever won. Now, I mean, that is a massive red flag. I don't just mean in a relationship, in a friendship. That is narcissism to the next level. It's just the biggest red flag I have ever heard in my life. It's ridiculous. In these conversations with her friend, Asta never clarified what winning men. But she did say that she wanted Jed Roos to win. And honestly, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. Sure, you'd want the dad of your daughter to win. But if that's the case, why did she bother bringing over this young lad from Lithuania? Asta then told his friend that Mantis was preparing for the meet. 
and obviously his friend's like, what do you mean he's preparing? So Asta said that he was going out to buy something, but she couldn't tell her what over the phone. So his friend now knew without a doubt that this meeting was very serious and serious harm was very much intended. She also got this impression that it weren't going to be a fair fight. So she pleaded with Asta to stop the arrangements, but Asta wouldn't. She was loving the thrill. So his friend then tried to contact Jed Roos. She looked for him on Facebook, but couldn't find him. She was desperate to either get it stopped, or to contact Jed Roos and tell him about the danger. Tell him that it was going to be led into a trap. And because she couldn't find him, the meeting went ahead on the 17th of June in the streets of Newham, Romford. Jed Roos had absolutely no idea of the intended danger to his life. And this, by the way, was only five days after Mantis had arrived in the country. The police managed to find CCTV footage of Mantis getting on the bus that night, waving goodbye to Asta as he got on. But as this case already suggests, the participants in this medieval duel, as the prosecution kept calling it, were massively playing by different rules. Not only were they playing by different rules, but there was huge differences in their violent capabilities. 43-year-old Jed Roos was heavily intoxicated. 25-year-old Mantis was sober. We've already heard that Mantis had a massive history of violence, while Jed Roos had no history of serious violence. We know that Mantis was armed with a weapon, but Jed Roos was unarmed. Now, obviously, even if this was a fair fight, organised well, it would have been incredibly stupid and the wrong thing to do. But it makes it even worse for it's so clearly weighted to one side. With all that being unknown to Jed Roos, very late on Sunday the 16th of June 2019, close at midnight or just after, both Mantis and Jed Roos arrived at an alleyway in Stratford, 14 miles from Astor's home. Within minutes, Mantis had left Jed Roos for dead. It wasn't all that long after, that Mantis and Asta was back at Asta's home and she were deleting text messages. She was deleting anything that could link either of them back to the murder. She also went round removing important documents from her house. She was trying to get rid of all evidence that connected her to the murder, that connected Mantas to the murder, and she was trying to distance herself from both of the men. Although she did that over the next few days, that night Mantis Asta and I assume the children went out to celebrate by having pizza. It was at half past midnight in the very early hours of Monday the 17th of June that Jed Roos was found bleeding to death in an alleyway on Whalebourne Lane in Stratford. Emergency services including the police, paramedics and even an air ambulance were called to the scene. Jed Roos was bleeding heavily but he was still breathing. Despite everybody's best efforts, Jed Roos did die at one minute past one that morning. A knife that had been used in the attack was found in a bin and police were very quick to determine that Jed Roos's murder was likely to be the result of a targeted attack. The next day, Asta continued life as normal. She sent her daughter to school and she went to work. But two days after the murder, on the 19th of June 2019, Asta and Mantis were both arrested and the day after, that was charged with murder. I don't know how Mantis acted during the police interviews, but Asta lied profusely throughout the entire thing. Then Mantis pled guilty to murder on the 17th of October 2019. But Asta still continued to stand her ground. She still continued to plead not guilty to all charges right to the very end. The post-mortem found that Jed Roos had 35, at least, by the way, at least 35 separate stab wounds. Those were to his body, his chest and his neck, with 11 of the 35 being just to his neck. As a result of these wounds, bones had been damaged, suggesting that severe force had been used. In court, the police had proof that Astra had been in contact with both men throughout the day before the murder, and they had further proof that she was key to orchestrating the fatal meeting. Astra's friend was a witness during the trial, she came to court and told the jury everything that Astra had been doing and saying to manipulate both of these men. The jury also heard from the police, who talked about how Astra had reacted when they went round to her house to tell her that her ex-husband had been murdered. 
I told her that he had been killed and stabbed. It was just a normal reaction. Nothing abnormal at all. During their interactions, Asta had told the police that she'd last spoke to Jed Rude that previous evening. And while submitting grounds for mitigation, Mantas's lawyer told the court that Mantas had regarded Asta as a goddess. But ultimately, despite all the lies and trying to get out of it, Asta was found guilty on the 9th of January 2020. They were both sentenced on the 17th of February 2020. Mantas Kavderas was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 22 years for the murder. Asta stood emotionless as she was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 24 years for murder and two years for perverting the course of justice to run concurrently. The judge said that Asta had enjoyed the warnings of how dangerous Mantis was. And you deliberately and cynically load Mr. Juskaskus into a dark alley where just after midnight you, Mantis, slaughtered this drunk and defenceless man. Such was the speed and surprise of your brutal knife attack that he suffered 35 individual wounds to his neck, head, arms and body. By contrast you, Mantas, walked away without a mark. The force you used was sufficiently great that he suffered many wounds that were deep enough to cut through bone and one passed through his neck. He bled to death but in a few minutes. That he was taken off guard is clearly demonstrated by the circumstances of this attack. Mr. Juskaskus was the father of Juskaskin's five-year-old daughter, but you two regarded him as an unwelcome irritation to your relationship, and so you resolved to get rid of him. It was your joint plan that he would be seen as a victim of a drug deal that had gone wrong, and you meticulously planned it in the belief that the police would not be able to track this attack back to you. You went to work as if to pretend that everything was normal. You are callous and selfish. Your conduct in the witness box and throughout this trial demonstrates that the only person you have any sympathy for is yourself. A statement read to the court from Jed Roos's mom said, I can't find the words, if there are any, to explain the heartbreaking and devastating concoction of feelings that conjured inside me when I registered that I was never going to see my son again, that I would never walk through my front door. It would never evoke in me a sense of contentment and completion. It would never have a chance to laugh again. It would never be living. It would never be. His sister said, The loss of my brother, my parents' son, my child's uncle, and his children's father has created a colossal and irreplaceable hole in our lives. The court was even told Asta's eldest daughter said he was a good man to Asta. He always loved her. He always took care of her. There you go. That's all I've got for you. I don't know how this video is going to turn out. I might have to re-record it because I was interrupted a lot. Um, but this case, a very short one. I know a few people are going to moan about that. But that's the deal with only doing cases that no one's heard of. Sometimes the reason they're not heard of is because they're not that well covered. So you have to spend hours and hours digging for every last bit of information you can find. Um, but this is a brutal case. It's so strange to me. Asta is so shallow and she only cares about herself. And that really does show throughout this entire case. She, she broke up a marriage and a nice, seemingly happy family and got frustrated at it all because she wanted to be dangerous. She wanted to live dangerously. Unfortunately, when you've got four kids, that's not reality. That's not a life choice you can make. And then to bring this guy over and then have the cheek to tell a friend that actually, I want my ex-husband to win. What a load of nonsense. You didn't actually care who won. You just wanted this big masculine fight and to have this bad boy on your arm that you'd feel safe and protected from. But ultimately, it's led to one death and two imprisonments. And again, the children are the ones that are suffering. The children are the ones that are left out. They've now... Well, the, the, I, obviously, Jed Roos's daughter, mainly because she ain't got a father or a mother. Um, the other children just as much because they've lost the mom. It is so stupid of an idea so stupid of anything and it does ring true of a lot of true crime cases where people go to meet someone in this situation thinking it's not going to be as dangerous um and you know we had it a while ago where someone was saying that they were going to go meet someone for a fight and we're like don't go you never know how many people that's going to be there you never know if there's going to be a weapon do not intentionally get yourself in to that situation 
Even more so if you think you're big enough to handle it. Because if a person thinks is a lot bigger than they're a lot bigger than me, then they're more likely to cheat. I'm not I'm I'm not snowflake here, I'm not gonna say violence is never the answer. It's not, there is always a better answer, by the way. But the reality is we should avoid conflicts. It just makes sense. The, the, the reality is, yeah, we get angry, yeah, fights do happen. But going to enter a fight, traveling to be in a fight, is just stupid. And it's a shame here that neither of the men could see that Asta didn't care about either of them. She just wanted this fight. She wanted this duel of these two men fighting over her. Just so she felt great about it. Just so she felt like two men were fighting for her. What more can you say to summarize a person up than that? She's selfish. She's evil. She's cold. And she... She's exactly where she belongs. I'm glad she got just as much more than Mantis did. And there you go. That's my ramble done. Um, like I said, I am sorry this is a short case. And I am very sorry if the quality is not there. I've tried to speak slower because I think on the last one I recorded, um, I was speaking a bit fast. So I've tried to slow it down. <sighs> there you go. I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you for watching. All I'm saying is, I love you. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. And I'll see you next week. Bye.